Okay, there's two games to talk about in this video, starting with Game 69 against the Buffalo Sabres. And like we touched on in the last video, Pedersen's offensive production has been slowing down a bit, so to get him going, Coach Rick Tockett put Connor Garland up on the first line with Petey, hoping his feistiness wears off on him. I've played with Petey in the past, very exciting player to play with. There's there's not much I can help him with, he's a, he's a terrific player. Our job is just to come in and play with some energy, maybe create some space down low and get on the forecheck for him. I, th I think they're going to be good. A few moments later. Hoaglander in on the right wing, drops for Pedersen. Across for Hughes, threw it towards the goal. The puck's in, and the Canucks with a weird one. Another early goal. Yeah, I guess it worked because Garland stuffed in his 14th goal of the season to put the Canucks up one nothing. Not even five minutes into the game. Cool. Then look at this slick little stick lift from Lindholm, pit pocketing the puck off Gergensen's to set up Sam Lafferty for a great scoring chance. This is textbook, and it's beautiful, and Gergensen's ate shit in the corner to make it look even cooler. Casey DeSmith made a nice save in his third game as a temporary starting goalie while Thatcher Demko remains out of the lineup with a knee injury. Then look at this disgusting move by Pedersen. Yucky! Petey was feeling it this game. Then, JT Miller almost added to his already long list of highlight reel goals, but Devin Levi was there to make the save. Then, Captain Quinn Hughes absolutely crunched Victor Olofsson with a big, clean, open ice hit. What does it mean when you see a leader like that making that kind of hit? Well, it's a message around the league. Don't go up the middle with Quinn Hughes. He's, he, I think he on the bench, he was actually smiling that he liked it that much. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was a good feeling. Then in the second period, the Canucks started looking like the Harlem Globetrotters for a second. It started with Hughes moonwalking with the puck, and then they ran a set play that almost worked. Could you imagine if that had gone in? But then Miller left the game after blocking a shot. <sighs> I've made a decision. Starting now, if a player from the Canucks gets sidelined with an injury, I'll deliberately give myself the exact same injury as a gesture of solidarity and support. <sighs> Starting now. What did this look like to you guys? A bashed ankle? One second. <laughs> okay, I feel like I'm on the team now. Let's go, boys. Oh, Miller's back. Right. Okay, cool. Nice. That's awesome. Lafferty made a nice pass to set Lindholm up with the scoring chance, but Levi was able to make the save. Is it just me, or are you noticing some chemistry forming between these two? Also, look at this. Sabres forward Tyson Jost hit Pedersen, but it's nothing special. It was pretty much just a little bump, but we're getting close to the playoffs, and that's Vancouver's superstar. So Philip Hronick had discussions with Jost, then Big Hog reverse hit Jost, and then Tyler the Chaos Giraffe Myers blasted Jost into the boards, and at that point, I'm sure Tyson was just thinking to himself, will you guys please Jost stop it? PD sent Mickey in on a breakaway, but Levi stopped him. However, there was a holding call in the play, giving the Canucks their third power play of the game, and PD cashed in, scoring his 32nd goal of the season. 2-0 Whale Team. Garland was looking solid all game, playing up on the first line with Petey, so that's great news. It's good to have someone like him you can move up and down the lineup like that, especially when the injury bug hits in the playoffs. Suter took a penalty, but the Canucks killed it off thanks to great PK work from Pedersen, Susi, Zadorov, Mikheyev, Bluger, and Ian Cole. Then DeSmith made a great save, fending off a shot in the slot from the always dangerous Tage Thompson. The Sabres did eventually beat Casey thanks to a great play by their best player Rasmus Dahlin to make it 2-1, but whatever. Tyler Myers made a nice defensive play. Then the linesman accidentally stopped Besser from clearing the puck, leading to this great chance for the Sabres, but guess who was there to save the day? Tyler Myers. Buffalo pulled their goalie, Pedersen said thank you, Canucks won 3-1. Dahlin loads up, shoots, scores! 3-2. Okay. Before I move on to the next game, I gotta tell you guys that I started a podcast. It's called The Nuckhead Podcast. Genius, right? The first episode is live right now, and it's available everywhere you listen to podcasts. Here's a clip from it. So next thing I know, I'm absolutely drunk out of my mind, and I just went up to this group of guys, and I said something like, I bet I could beat you all in ping pong easily. The third guy looks over at me, and it's Nils Hoaglander. And he's looking at me, and he's like, what? <laughs> and I'm looking back at him, and I'm like, uh, are you Nils Hoaglander? And he went, yeah. And I was like, do you want to play ping pong? I'll also be posting video clips from the podcast on the brand new Nuckhead Podcast YouTube channel, so go subscribe to that if you're interested. Now, on to Game 70 against the rebuilding Montreal Canadiens. The Canadiens are a young, exciting team that's only going to get better with time. They're also the new home of ex-Canuck Tanner Pearson, who's playing his first game against his former team. Also, remember that guy Mike Matheson? The guy who did this two weeks into Pedersen's rookie season? Well, that was over five years ago now, so I think it's time we forgive and forget. 
Okay, well, it was nice seeing Pod Colson hit him here, but now we move on. Petey deked the balls off Habs captain Nick Suzuki and drew a penalty in the process, and then the Canadians got called for too many men, giving the Canucks a rare two-man advantage power play, but they couldn't score. And then Brendan Gallagher got a breakaway, but Ryan Gosling stopped him. Quick pause of appreciation for Casey DeSmith, who's done a great job so far stepping in for Demko. Seriously, this is a big moment for him and the team. Thank you, Casey. Canucks legend Alex Burrows was at the game watching Nikita Zadorov score on the team he coaches to make it 1-0 for Vancouver. Miller crashed into the net, Montreal was mad, they took a penalty, the Canucks didn't score on the power play again. Is this gonna be a problem? Then Habs defender Caden Gooley headbutted Teddy Bluger's elbow and there was no call on the play? Man, Gooley got away with one there. But it's okay because one minute later this happened. Here's a pass across, and oh, shoots a scores, his second of the period. Nikita the Kitten Big Zed Zaddy Zadorov scored his fifth goal of the year and second of the period to put his team up 2-0. Then look at this save by Casey Dedemko de Smith. Absolutely gorgeous. Then Sam Lafferty got called for tripping, but thanks to Teddy Bluger's active stick and JT Miller's relentless hustle, the Canucks were able to kill it off, still 2 0. Then watch this Caden Gooley, the guy who smashed his dome on Bluger's weenus earlier, took a run at Pedersen and became public enemy number one. First, it was Big Hog who had something to say to him. Then Elias Lindholm ran him into the boards. Then Pod Colson got him pretty good with a reverse hit and got him again just a few seconds later. What did Gooley learn today? Don't mess with Petey. And he got off with a warning. He's lucky he didn't have to meet with Jewel or Zadorov. Oh, and during all the headhunting, Connor Garland seized the opportunity to punch Arbor Jekai a few times and take a penalty, but thanks to another clutch save from DeSmith, the Canucks were able to escape the Habs power play unharmed and Garland scored instead. What a slick heads up pass by Bluger and what a sneaky heads down shot by Garland. 3-0 Canucks. Petey was Harlem Globetrotting again. Nice. The Canucks were so dominant this game that when Montreal did eventually score, the Horn guy just assumed it was another Canucks goal and accidentally pressed the button. Caulfield long shot, check that! <laughs> 3-1. Then watch Mike Pizzetta take a run at Miller on the boards here. This is mind-bogglingly similar to Manson's hit on Miller just a few games ago. It wasn't nearly as dirty though, but JT was still mad. And rightfully so, because just 30 seconds later Pizzetta went after Hughes and nobody seemed to notice. Watch him sneakily cross-check Quinn right in the ribs here. You can see him do it. But honestly, I'm not mad because the Canucks superstars are going to be facing that kind of thing every game in the playoffs, so it's good they learn now. Besser blocked a shot, and then we got a goal from Nils Oman. 4-1, and with just over five minutes left in the game, Zadorov took the puck behind the net and waited for the time to run out. And that was that. The Canucks won 4-1, improving their record to 44-18-8. Good enough for first in the Pacific Division, first in the Western Conference, and tied for second in the league. However, if you arrange it by points percentage, the stat that takes games played into account, the Canucks are tied for first in the entire league. <laughs> Also, 24 of you predicted the score of Game 69 against the Buffalo Sabres correctly, and 14 of you predicted the score of Game 70 against the Montreal Canadiens correctly, including these four who guessed the score of both correctly. Genius. The next two games are against the Calgary Flames and Los Angeles Kings, so comment your score predictions below. I'll be shouting out all the correct answers in the next video. Thank you to all the amazing people who have clicked the join button to support what I do. You guys actually rock. Thank you for watching. I'll see you Wednesday. Bye. You, know, you can feel the excitement in the building, you can feel the excitement in the city, running into people, and it's just, uh, it's been a fun time of year so far.